Hi there, my name is Tristan from Mortlock Yachts and this is your guide to buying a yacht. The first question you need to ask yourself is why? What is the reason you want to buy a yacht? I asked this question to the owner of AWOL, the vessel I used to be captain on, and his response was great. He said, you know what, Tristan? When I look back at our family photos over the years, we are happiest as a family when we're on board the boat and we create our most treasured memories on board the boat. So for me, I can't put a price on that. And I thought that was a really, really good answer. Personally, if I was on the market to buy a boat, I love boating. It would be for a number of reasons is you get to wake up in a new location every morning whilst unpacking your bags just once. We all know the summer hot spots in the Mediterranean, all the nice beaches, all looks great in the photos, but when you get there, there's loads of people, lots of tourists, parking's really difficult, there's lots of traffic, queuing up for food, and it's just more of a stress than it is a holiday or vacation. Whereas when you have a boat, the boat is the beach, you, the food is on board, there's no crowds, there's no finding parking, go to a nice bay, you drop your anchor, you enjoy your day on board the boat and then off to the next location. That's my reasoning. So you should ask yourself that question as well is why do I wanna buy a boat? The second really important thing is have you ever owned, chartered or been guests on board a yacht before? This is really important because uh, in some cases people might think, oh, I wanna go and buy a yacht not having ever spent time on the water and then buy the yacht, then realizing it's not for them, or perhaps they, their partner, their kids might get seasick, not enjoy it. So what I suggest that if you never spent time on board a yacht before, perhaps chartering a yacht for a week, 10 days, two weeks first, might be the smarter option, rather than committing to buying a yacht, have a big commitment, a big expense, and then realizing it's not for you. The other question you need to ask yourself is how do you envision using the yacht? Are you buying it for you and your family? Are you buying it for perhaps business purposes? Uh, spend time with friends? Maybe you're buying a yacht because you want to live on board. How much time realistically are you going to be spending on board the yacht? Because, you know, if you're only spending a few weeks a year on board a yacht, it might not be worthwhile and you'd be better off chartering each year because then you don't have the annual running costs. If you charter for one or two, two weeks of the year, the moment you finish a charter, you've got no additional expenses after that and no, no things to worry about, you know, employing people. So you need to find the right balance and find what's right for you and really be realistic about how much time you will be spending on board the vessel. Now, if you decided that buying the vessel is the right path to take, you've got to start asking yourself questions like, how many cabins do we need? And when it comes to this kind of decision, you want to be a bit more forward thinking. Because let's say you have, you know, a younger family who in the next two, three years, the kids might be coming to teenagers. They're going to want to start having their own space, their own cabin. So initially, maybe a two or three cabin boat might have suited you. But two, three, four years down the line, you might think mm, we should have gone for a four or five cabin boat. So that's a really important decision to make. Yes, you can start off with a smaller boat and then go bigger later on. So you need to think about that as well and what best suits your criteria. A very important element is the budget. How much you are willing to spend to purchase the yacht, okay? Now, not to forget to take into consideration the annual running cost. So you might see while you're shopping for, for a vessel, a big yacht that matches your budget to purchase the boat, but don't get blindsided because the running costs, as you imagine on a bigger yacht, are gonna be undoubtedly higher than that of a smaller yacht in general. So they get blindsided by you know, a vessel that may appear to have an amazing deal. Usually there is a reason behind that. People don't sell big yachts for cheap without a good reason. So really think about the money, how much you're willing to spend. And even if you're having a bad year personally in terms of your income, the, the vessel is gonna continue costing you whatever it is, 
each year. So really do think about that. Now that you understand that you do want to buy a boat, you understand your budget, you understand more or less the type of boat you want in terms of size, in terms of number of cabins. The next step is you're probably going to be scrolling the internet on sites such as Yacht World. You'll be scrolling around looking for different boats that match your criteria, which is great, which you should be doing that. And whilst you're looking at sites and browsing through other boats, you want to find yourself a broker like Mortlock Yachts. A broker's job is to understand your requirements, understand your budgets, educate you and make sure you fully understand what you're getting into, um, understand the costs, what the requirements are, where you want to keep the boat, whether the vessel is going to be charter or private, whether you're going to hire a crew or you're going to run it yourself. And a good broker will guide you every step along the way. Now, the great thing about having a broker like us at Mortlock Yachts is that no additional cost to you and you're getting expert advice, which is unbiased because a broker like us doesn't represent the seller. They represent the buyer who is you. So it's in our interest to find you the right boat. I would then suggest discussing with us whether you want to keep the boat private. So for your own personal use, or you want to have it available for charter. So when you're not using the boat, the vessel's being chartered, generating an income, which will help contribute to the running costs of the boat. Now, this is a very, very important decision. I won't go into it now, otherwise this video will go on forever. I might make another video about the pros and cons of chartering. Let me know in the comments box if you'd like to see that video, the pros and cons of chartering. So once your broker understands what it is that you are looking for, your budget, the size of the boat, all the details in between, they will then scour and start putting together a selection of yachts. And normally they might throw in one or two curveballs just to give you an idea what to expect should you go in a different direction. You would get that selection, you would narrow that selection down to perhaps two, three, four boats that you like the most. And then you would pass that information onto your broker. And then the next step from there would be arranging and scheduling the visits. And as a broker is scheduling the visits and the viewings, we will then start acquiring the history of the boat, the certification, any ongoing works, if it's been through refits, all those sort of things. So we get a whole general picture of the condition of the vessels that you're looking at. And to make sure the vessel doesn't have any hidden secrets or a dark past. The next step, once you've chosen the boat that you like, is to make an offer. And at that stage, we open the MOA, which is a Memorandum of Agreement, the purchase contract. If the offer gets accepted, the next stages would be to put down a deposit, usually 10%, it could be 5%, it could be 15%, but it needs to be agreed by all parties involved. Next stages would be pre-purchase survey and the sea trials. Right, if anything major is picked up during the sea trials and the survey and it's wrong with the vessel, then the offer can be revisited or the seller must pay for the repair or the replacement of the broken item or whatever the surveyor has picked up during the survey. The next step would be then lawyers to do their job. They're making sure that there's no open legal cases involving the vessel, make sure there's no debt on the vessel if there is to ensure it's going to be paid off once, once the purchase is completed. All the certification including class and flag, uh, so they have to do all their due diligence, make sure everything is, is above board. Once they are happy, lawyers are happy, we'll continue going through the MOA. The next stages are the final payment and all payments, including deposit, goes into escrow. Once the funds have been received, then there's a change of ownership. Once a change of ownership is completed, the lawyers will then distribute the funds to the relevant parties. During that process with the lawyers and the purchasing, you want to start thinking about how you want to run the vessel. If you're running it commercially with crew, you got to think of you got to think about crew employment agreements, crew payroll, the vessel accounting, class certificates, flag certificates, um, any work that needs to be done to the vessel, scheduling, all those sort of things. You need to think about now. What we do also at Mortlock Yachts, we offer a full management service. So it gives the client peace of mind. And honestly, there's no real headache for the client. If you do it all yourself and you've never done it before, it can be quite tricky. 
and you've got to be very careful where you get your advice from. Do look into that. You can talk to us at Mortlock Yachts about how we can help you manage your vessel should you be looking to, to buy one in the near future. Now, just taking a step back, the other thing I would recommend is when you are going through the purchase stages and the lawyers are involved, don't use your business lawyer or your family lawyer. Be sure to hire a qualified maritime lawyer that specializes in this sort of thing. I've seen in the past where buyers have brought in their own lawyers and it's just been a nightmare. Get the lawyers that specialize in the maritime sector and understand <clears throat> the process of purchasing a vessel. And then you take ownership of the vessel, you have your crew, start setting, setting everything up, and then you can go and have some fun by personalizing the vessels, choosing your soft furnishings or the water toys. You might wanna have custom made crockery, custom made towels, all those sort of things. That's a really fun part of the process. Go off on your first trip, enjoy the time on the water, on your new toy with your friends and family. Another thing to think about, if you're buying an older yacht with the vision to then refit it, I would strongly consider using the yacht as it is for at least one season. Now, the reason I say that is because you might be thinking, right, we're going to buy this yacht. We're going to take it straight to the shipyard and do a full refit. That happens in a lot of cases and it can work out. But from experience, it's always better to use the boat first and understand what it is you want to change, what you want to improve. You might want to change the layout, the materials, whatever it might be. It's better to spend some time on board first using the boat before making any decisions. I'll give you a prime example. When the owner of AWOL bought the vessel, we had a main deck storage room that used to be a day head. And he made the decision to turn it from a storage room back into a day head. And so that, that decision was made. And in that season, that day head was never used and the crew were lacking in storage space. So after that first season, it was then converted back into a storage space. So some ideas might look good on paper. You might think that is a good idea. But until you're actually using it and putting it into practice, it might not be a good idea. So that's just some food for thought before making any rash decisions should you be looking at doing a full refit on a boat. So if you're thinking about buying a boat or you want some guidance or some advice, do get in contact with our team. I'll put all our contact details in the description box below or in the pinned comment. You can contact us and we'll help you as much as we can along the way. And before I go, if you're interested to know how much crew get paid in the deck department from entry level deck hand all the way up to a captain on a 100 plus meter super yacht, then click this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to hear from you if you're looking to buy a boat. I look forward to seeing you next time. See you and ciao.